Hello friends, it is I, Rob, here in my basement, the Lair of Omnisai, and I'm here with my son Alex. Hello! Who someday will inherit all of this. But, uh, this is Wave 2 of Dwarven Forge, uh, from the Kickstarter Dungeon of Doom. Uh, when I did Dungeon of Doom, I thought that, uh, a lot of the, the stuff was amazing but I couldn't spring for the entire dungeon, so what I did was I picked up the first three encounters, which you have seen already, and I also got encounter number six, which was the acid pools, acid bath, acid pit, what have you. And then I also got the uh, Jade Temple of Sisul, which is not in this box. Uh, but what I did get was a lot of bits and pieces, all the exciting stuff uh, that they were that they had, um, and especially stuff that was on separate parts that were um, attractive to me and not too expensive. So this is going to be a lot of smaller boxes. So I will <coughs> open her up here. This is not a good way to open a box, but this is a really awkward place to have a box. Sorry. For what? I put the box here. No, for the, um... Oh, no, the box... The, the knife is fine. The, the Arkansas toothpick... Um, does a good job of opening boxes for the most part. It's just my angles are going to not be so good. It's not going on. What you were doing? Trying to pick my okay. Sorry. So we're going to open that up. And uh, I like on the side of the box it says Dwarven. How many things can you get that actually are mentioned that they are created by dwarves? Not one. Okay, we have packing paper. So we'll get to my. My they industrious will, assistant to take care of. They will be like snakes. All right. Hmm. From then on, these are all smaller boxes with the bits and pieces. So, uh, I'm going to stop. We're going to open up all of the. Oh, here, I'll show you all the. Yeah, there's a lot of them. So I'm going to take these out of the box and we're going to open them one at a time for the video. So don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. All right, big box is gone. We've got lots of little boxes here. The packing slip. And, uh, yep, all the separate little pieces. So we're letting Alex pick out which sets we go through first. Some of them are going to just have a few items in them because they were... Uh, the individual pieces section. Some of them have small boxes, but lots of parts. So we will go with the first one. This hey. is uh, this is the wicked tricks or wicked something. Wicked chicken? No, not wicked chicken. Wicked dungeon trove. These are all the nasty little things that uh, with a 3D dungeon you can spring on your players. It's like oh we're. We're in the clear here, and then all of a sudden, bam, monsters and such. So, oh. okay. All right, here we go. Now we're going to have on each of these all the thank you from Dwarven Forge for giving them our money to make their stuff that they wanted to. Okay. And we're also going to have an awful lot of plastic bags because they all come individually sealed in plastic bags. Um, one of the things that Dwarven Forge is probably happy about is sim the simple fact that their Dwarvenite content is so durable that all they needed was some packing paper. They didn't need to packing peanut the whole thing up. All right, we have some rubbery spider webs for a prop. Floppy. Floppy, but satisfying. Ooh, there are. We have a bed of spikes. This is going to go into a natural cavern setting to be seen in the future. We have magnetic manacles with little chains. This is another magnetic piece. This will slot into the wall and give us a set of manacles that can hang from the wall. Yay. Oh, chain. And then we have these kind of see-through eggs. 
larvae. Again, mostly intended for the um, for the uh, the natural cavern burrows dungeon. We have corner walls. These are the ones that have the pillars, and these are the would be the ancient doors or standard doors. Um, only downside to them, it doesn't look like they fit particularly well. I don't know if it's a matter of casting, but it looks like the door doesn't swing very freely. This is a little less, no, it's quite a bit less stiff than the original uh, Dwarvenite stuff I got from my first one, which is probably better for its durability, but there's a couple of doors. But it'll uh, it'll remain to see uh, to be seen, you know. Corner doors are, are are really useful. That drastically changes the layouts that you can do. For I don't uh, have a problem the... with um, opening and closing these. Eh, they're just a little rough, a little pliable. Okay, we have a couple more of the base parts. We saw these in the acid bath as having the ability to put. Uh, something into these to make it glow. What those will, what will those be? We will see soon. More majestic. We have a few corner pieces again of the vaulted uh, rooms. These are not magnetic, they're just more corner pieces again giving us more that we can build. In here we have a natural burrow section. It's still a two inch by two inch lip, but it has the natural area that we could either put the spikes into and they'll fit in the socket really ne neatly. Or the larvae. We could put, I believe, the larvae in. And they'll look just like the little grotesqueries they are. Yes. And we have two of those, so we can seat both of them in the same dungeon setting. And because they have the square stone base, it'll work with <clears throat> all the other tiles. Ah, more, more manacles. Manacles for everybody. Yeah. All right, now we have a... Oh, that's kind of neat. This is an alcove piece, kind of an ossuary effect, with all these skulls. One, More shaky. two, oh, let's don't be distracted, please. Sorry. Three, four, five, six. Oh my gosh. Okay, there's a lot of these. If you want to go with the skull and pillar theme, this will give you plenty of ammunition for that. Very nice. Again, for, for dressing up your dungeons and, uh, you know, helping. Here's a couple of pillar sections. Risers. They're hollow for less weight, but uh, they're Dwarvenite. They're still very, very tough. And we have a glowing crystal. I think I just dropped one. It's down below me, Alex. Yes. You think you can get it? Oh, I need a flashlight. You can just bend over and pick it up, please. It's right below me. Oh. It's right there. Maybe. Thank you. So, we'll pop the... ...to show you what that looks like. And... kaboom! We have a flickering crystal. It looks a lot better. If we do there we go. this, then you can see the flickering effect. So, definitely cool. And we'll turn those off to save the batteries. Did you turn it off? Oh. Um, this is, ah. Yes. Make sure you do that, please. All right, of course, those will be going to add to all of the other 
uh, lighted effects that we got from the first batch. Oh, gosh. Okay. We have... Ah, uh, okay. These are kind of cool. We have big mouth, ugly looking gargoyles. Uh, I'm not sure if these are magnetic or not. We'll have to look. I don't think they are. But we have these bases. It's these. Da, 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 where's the pillars? There we go. Ooh. These can slot into um, tiny holes that are on these posts. And then you can have a proper perching place for your ugly gargoyle. It's just going to fall over easily. Uh, not too easily, I don't think. And then we have these larger posts with these small columns, which don't fit in that. So I must have either missed what they went into or haven't gotten to it yet. We'll see. Ah, uh, yes. And then we come to... A few corner pieces. Gosh, there you go. Two of these. These allow you to take these corner doors and sync them up and keep to the space theme in a square room. We have the well. Which we'll, uh, we'll definitely be painting, of course. Um, maybe even put in a little polyurethane in for a liquid. So you know, it looks like there was water in there. Um, or, you know, you could do anything. You can put in lava effects. You can put in, um, you know, glitter and such and make it look like a, a, an enchanted pool. Yay. So, very, very cool. I admit I'm a little bit flummoxed about the, uh, what the the pillars are for with the posts. I don't quite understand what these are, but maybe they will um, become obvious to me as we continue. So that's if you would put the pieces in there when you're done looking at them. I'd appreciate it. Okay, what's next? Let me just put these bags. Want a little one? Uh, this one. All right. This one is my LED wall set. Um, I believe I've said when I unboxed the first set that I love the thing that got my imagination with this more than anything else was the LED torches and effects that they could do. Um, that where light. Do we put this? Uh, just off to the side, if you'd be so kind. Thank you. Yeah. Just so it doesn't fall and anything like that. Um, but anyhow, the more nice product shot. Yeah. We do love our sparkers up here. Yes. Um, okay. Um, but yes, uh, these are three more, or four more, sorry, four more wall sections with the LED insert. So these are just walls. They have the two pinholes in them, which are leads for the torches. And I've got four torches here. I like the dimension of adding light values to my dungeon, showing visually what's dark and what's light, um, and letting the players know that they need to take care of lighting in areas that are intentionally left dark. You've already seen these before. Why didn't you put these in there, too? Oh. Silly boy. All right. Just for more shaky. That's fine. Next. Oh. Next. All right. These. Okay, these are ledges. Um, one of the things about the uh, the dungeon so far is everything is comfortably square. There are angles, but they're all 45 degree angle uh, spaces. And none of the ones so far have been all that natural. So this gives a little bit more organic. More support. Or thank you for everything that you've done. You're very thankful. Thank you. That's good. Everywhere. To Stefan and company at Dwarven Forge. So these are going to be 
the kind of ledge pieces where the squares stop and then you're going to get more natural elements to uh, a butt, uh, like a shore, or uh, a butt is a real word, I'm not just being silly, um, like a shoreline or maybe a lava uh, section. So they're irregular. They have a cor bless you, a corner of a regular piece and then the rough areas that are the non-finished sections. Thank bless you. you again. Thank you. Here you go. Thank you. Always prepared here in the dungeon. <laughs> Not enough dungeons have Kleenex. Did you know that? No. It's true. So here we have a, another single square piece with a flat end to butt up against the rest of your dungeon areas and then more irregular uh, coast and shoreline. They're not designed to meet up and, and be, you know, cogent. They're meant to stick out and um, give you an irregular space. Round next time. Thank you. So. We also have these stepping stones. Um, these could be useful in the lava berth. Again, they're irregular, nearly, you know, one inch across, one inch. Um, these also had the magnetic sockets and everything, but I didn't go with a lot of the magnetic uh, pieces. Only the ones for the actual acid bath, really. Here's another section, which is a portion of a two by two, but then it drifts away into this rough coastline. Um, almost, again, almost looks acid etched, eaten away. Um, this was really uh, an inexpensive add-on that I saw, and I'm like, well, I like the ability to do different things. Here's another one. This is a longer stretch, and as you can see, it's still got the cordoned off section, piece by piece, but there's four of those, and then one more of the crumbled two by two. So those are kind of kind of cool. I'm not going to use those a lot. I don't use a lot of shorelines and stuff. I'm picking the next one because I want to see this next one. These are the ancient pillars that I chose. I'm mostly interested in them because they're going to give a foreshadowing of the shrine I haven't gotten yet. And will not be getting yet until they ship that part out. Hopefully not too much longer. There we go. Pillars! Yes. Pillars and pillars and pillars. Yes. It's okay. We have a jade relief pillar with gems socketed inside. Ooh, that this looks... is a nice accent piece, eh? Very pretty. Very pretty. It's like a top, like a... These are also towering pieces. They're much larger than the usual walls of the dungeon. And they're sturdy enough that they can be used to hold up a chunk of the dungeon around them. If you want to go for a multi-level, you could use these to anchor a larger piece. And there are four of these jade pillars. They were a little bit more expensive, I think, than the non-jade, but very little. Only a dollar, a couple dollars more. Um, and I think that, from looking at it, the effects are worth it. Because these are very pretty. And like I said, this will be a good... Don't knock it over. Knock those out, please. Thank you. Also with this came more of these pillars with the little posts on them. According to the, these are marble texture. Yes, they are. And again, everything on mine is unpainted. Huh? The marbling they have looked very nice. But you have to, you have to save money where you can. So, again, these are pins. I suspect these pins are going to be more useful in the elevation towers um, to prop up those pieces. We haven't seen them yet, so those are part of the delays. 
You all done there? Okay. Next box. Yes. Next box of goodies. Uh, Alright. These are ah, more light up effects. I don't know yeah. if I told you this, but I really like the light up effects and things. It's really what got me. Yeah, I know I told you this. But you're gonna, you're gonna hear it again. I really love the the light up torches and crystals and everything. Um, I wanted that that extra element, and this set had different ways of getting it. Of course, I got some with the sets that I've had so far. Um, the J Temple will have a few more, but um, this is another LED pack. This is the corner pack, I think. Looks like it's, it's got a couple of different pieces. Wall. It has four of the LEDs, like I showed you before. Straight wall with the torch socket. This one also has. Four corner pieces with a torch socket, also with the pillars, and four of those, and eight torches, eight of the oh. torches. So oh. I do have enough torches for all my bits, which is good. Nothing too exciting until you take it in the context of, again, what I can do with the lighting elements. You want that? There you go. Next. Okay. Come, come. There's plenty of boxes left. Looks good. All right. This is the... Uh, this... Uh, one of the things about uh, that I've missed... From previous Dwarven Forge Kickstarters is they had a cavern set. Um, looked really cool and I do often have my Delvers going into uh, underground caverns, not always uh, man-made dungeons, but sometimes just caves and the like. Natural. And exactly. And what this has is some of the creepy crawlies and little odds and ends that you might find in that kind of a setting. Again, it was an add-on pack that wasn't very expensive. It has a couple of giant worker ants. <laughs> um, you know, it's they were they were a basically a free add-on that they got for hitting stretch goals. Otherwise, they're the same as you can get. And um, I mean, I know they made them, but they're they're really not that much different from what you can get in um, a novelty pack for like gifts uh, for Halloween bugs and creepy crawlies. I've gotten a few of those in my time, and and they've been worth a while. Uh, the frog packs work as great giant frog miniatures, and okay, we have more of the base natural basin spikes and eggs. We have three of each of those. We've got more spider webs. These will uh, lay quite nicely on dungeon walls and such. And there's three of those in there. And we also have, of course, the square that the the eggs or the spikes larvae. go into. No, they're still eggs. A little larvae when they hatch. Into like worms and such. And then we have this natural pillar. Uh, it's not really well, it's straight enough you could probably use it for elevation, too, to hold something up. And then we have, also, a pit. these uh, these are uh, cavern enders. You plug these into a cavern, and this holds together and signifies this is the end of a wall, I believe. This is a natural stone plug for that insert so that you can disguise your nefarious deeds and when that's in place no one can tell that when they walk over it instead they're gonna have spikes 
the illusion fades and spiky bits. Ah, Indeed. And this was cool. I like this. This is a transition so that you can go from your dungeon to your burrow section with this big gaping hole in the wall. It also works for prison breaks or, you know, demonstrating transitions um, without having a set doorway, which I think is pretty cool. All right, Alex, another box. Yes, another box of box. We're about halfway through, I think. More, more natural cavern things. Ah, here we come to the burrows proper. Now, one whole level of the dungeon was the burrows, which looked really cool. It had a 3D element that had risers that you could uh, go up and climb along and such. The thing is, I'm not really a fan of uh, 3D elements all in one setting. Um, I'd rather stage out multiple. Your excuse. I'd rather stage out multiple layers and have players move transition from one to the other. Also, they were. A little on the, it was, I think it was like $350 for that one set. So instead what I did was I ended up buying several of these, which these aren't the full height uh, dungeon sections that you, uh, that you saw with, you know, all of the others like. So it's like a hole. Yeah. So instead of like a dungeon wall that's two feet high, two inches high, two inches wide. Uh, this only goes up to about a third to a half of that. Not quite a full inch high. But again, it makes it easier to see your, your party and move them around. This space itself isn't a full, um, you know, wouldn't be a full five feet wide. The players are going to have to crawl through some tighter spaces in these caverns. So we have three straight pieces with middle insets. I think there's some... Um... There are some holes, yes. If you take those end caps that I had in that last one. End caps. Remember that? Yep, I remember. Yes. Also, and I don't know why I did it. Oh, how's that? Uh, these are all magneted up. I don't think I asked for it, so they might have just thrown that in there. Alex, you want to bring one back so you can show what that looks like? We have a U bat or a L shaped pen here. Did you knock the battery or the charger out, Alex? Charger. Oh yes. Sorry. Okay. Come on. We don't want to cut out because we have no power. It's still not in. Plug it in, please. That's what I'm trying to do. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, so this is a tight bend. This is a larger bend. Again, different things that we can do with these. These are more for making corridors rather than making looms out of these burrows. Very nice. Yay. So that would be a nice, neat little dead end. And we have more of those with the posts as well here. We have floor insets. So we could turn all those straight rooms into just straight rooms. Or a hole. We have these ending posts we can stick in and make any of these caverns dead ends. Uh, these are in a uh, browner uh, uh, dwarvenite as well, which is neat. Um, less need to paint them. They're practically already taken care of. Um, of course, I'll do highlights and maybe individual stones or features of each. Uh, a couple more corners. Bends in the corridor. So, again, the detailing on these is really nice. And one of the things they did was they used these roots and things to spell out the five foot boundaries for each space. So that even though they aren't as sharply chiseled out, you can still see who's in what space. Just kind of a nice touch. Ooh, so, some good thinking on their part. Okay, that's cool. And we have an end small chamber. This again has the uh, open space that you can put the larvae or the spikes into. Um, and a peg to go into a corridor. So, as you can see, it joins up neatly and ends off a corridor.
section. Wait, are these walls or... Or just narrow tunnels? Those are tunnels. Ah. Uh, so if a person gets to here, they're going to drop? No, not necessarily. Or they're going to have to go all the way back? Well, we're going to have to put one of these plugs in to show that it's solid. And then there are a couple of spacers, little one-inch sections that can plug in and extend any of the corridors. So this is all about building new shapes and things for these Oof. Uh, dungeon bits. Sorry. I did it. You don't have to be sorry for things I do. I know. Okay. And lastly, we have, hey, more plastic webbing. They're really telling me to use spiders. They have another inset spiders. section. Again, with the spikes in it. Some little wicked tricks. And a T intersection, so that you can join up multiple corridors. With this section, I can all, this, this selection, I can already make several sections of corridor. Um, I'm not going to be able to do, you know, entire giant ant warrens that are, that are going to be huge and vast, but I can definitely create uh, situations that my players may have to struggle through in these kind of environments. Um, tight spaces are rarely working in the adventurer's favor. All right, I need another box. Small but sweet. Yes. These are my uh, LED alcoves. I can just use this. It is easier. Because that's not good you. It is easier. Thank you, Alex. You're welcome. Although this knife isn't just knife. cheap garbage knife, but it works okay. What kind of boxes? It does okay. And you can see. So many thank you letters. They're so thankful over there. I'm only going to open one of these because you've seen these before if you saw my first unboxing video. This is an LED alcove. Again, it's a semicircular. Uh, you can use it as the end of a corridor or an alcove, a section of the wall that's a bit deeper. Um, there is the LED you can put the torches in. Um, you can also, when I've used them, I put in the magical glyphs and they look great. So, that's that. Next. I'm going over it quickly, but you know, individual things like that really are going to help. Again, I can change light levels, I can create dramatic impact. A wall with a torch is nice. An alcove with a torch, the players are going to look at that with some interest. Jeez. This is D O U. Doors. Ah, doors. So many things you can do with doors. Doors are intentional drama makers. <laughs> go up and get the, t uh, the answer to the phone, please. I think yeah. Mom is going to. That's fine. Go up and answer the phone, please. So while Alex is going and doing that, we have uh, the double doors. And of course, you know, it's a two pillar frame. This just slides in. It's got a V channel cut in on either side so that the door slides in which is nice. On the very top of it, it's got a little pinhole so that you could put like that platform and the gargoyle on the top for a little bit extra dramatic impact. Never a bad thing, in my opinion, having as much dramatic impact in uh, your situations as you can. We have... Doo -doo -doo. I believe this is a magnetic alcove. think it is. Now I don't have those manacles. Do we have oh, something? Nothing. Okay. We'll look at that in a second. We have the doors. There's a couple of different types of doors. Um, I, the first set that I had, the original dungeon tiles, didn't have double doors. Wasn't an option. So, I love double doors as, again, doors are great. Double doors immediately command the attention because they usually mean something significant <laughs> is through them. Uh, rarely are there double doors to an empty room. 
at least in my dungeons. Jeez. So we have these. Oops, wrong way. It actually does have a front and a back because of the positioning of the doors. So yeah. the little pins on the hinges match up, and um, it all looks good when it's together. Unfortunately. I'm not going to help speed things up. Okay, that works. Another door. Alright, so, uh, that's what they look like when they're together, and they do open at the hinge. Grr. And we have another set of double doors. Yay. And more doors. But, here's the thing about the doors. It's not the first set that you saw were the basic doors, which are fine. You're not going to get the dramatic impact of these because they really aren't they aren't painted. However, I have more doors. I have these metal doors. These will be painted a steely color. Useful for those adamantium gates from dwarven uh, dwarven dells or uh, vault doors. They they look imposing either way. Uh, we have another set of the wooden doors. I have two sets of double doors, so you know, use the appropriate one. I've got these that are kind of an elven style look, but on the other side, they've got this cool flame motif. I think these were called the bronze doors. They got the almost a Celtic design on the back. They have it's kind of like a barrel with a flame over the top, from the cult of Donkey Kong, undoubtedly. <laughs> And then this one, these are the cool ones. These are the dragon doors. The far side has got a couple of runes, but you know, showing two dragons intertwined on your door, that's cool, and that's going to be painted up nicely. And then on the other side, you've got a couple of neat wards and glyphs. Um, significant doors for significant rooms. Um, could you give me a set of those magnetic lock uh, handcuffs that were in one of them, please? Yeah, I want to see. This alcove that I got here, I think it's magnetic, but I need a magnetic toy, too. Ooh. Very good, Alex. Thank you. You're welcome. I just have to see. Yes. Um, probably wouldn't use the magnetic handcuffs in a an alcove, but um, I can think of a number of traps that I have that would go well in those, and I think we're going to see some fun ones as we're going ahead. I thought this was... No, not magnetic. Hmm. Oh well. Oh, take it back. The back of it is magnetic. Yay. So, the uh, manacles hang enticingly down. <laughs> and they've got kind of this little... I didn't look at this before, but it's got a little imp's face on the manacle. Ooh, and, that's creepy. Which... Kind of looks grim. Yes. So, yeah, that's pretty cool. I'll put these in what there. What maniac would do that? Oh, I've got so many maniacs, I couldn't even tell you. I've got all the best maniacs. <laughs> okay, could you put these back in where they were? Yes, I would. Thank you very much. And I'll need a new box. Um, yes. Um. All right, so we're getting buried up to our eyeballs in these plastic bags, but... We'll be recycling everything. Oh well, just put it in a box, Alex. We'll be fine. Okay, we've got one, two, three, four, six, seven boxes yet. This is a bit. Okay. Alex, I need a box, please. I'm. I'm taking this box. Thank you, Alex. These I'm... are more ledges. I'm sorry. Well, hurry up. I'm trying. Shh. To... All right. There. So, isn't it nice when you don't have to worry about things breaking? You can be a little rougher with them than you ordinarily would. I think it's cool. Um, so, again, we've got more of the stepping stones. Put it down, please. Thank you. You can look at the pieces when they're. So, a couple more stepping stones again. Uh, those will be neat for the acid pool and other encounters than that. We have crumble ledges. These are little one-inch diagonal pieces that have been basically they serve as a ledge. So I've got some of those. 
be stuff here, right? Stop doing that now. Pay attention to what we're doing. Thank you. We have little crumbled one one by one sections. One section is shorish. One section. We have what would be considered difficult terrain. It's got rubble. And we have a couple that have been eaten away. Maybe hungry land sharks. Maybe it's a lava flow nearby. I'm not sure, but I'll have fun figuring that out as we go. And then we have some individual segments. We have one by one squares. These are not shore. These are just to make these shore pieces a little easier to settle in with the rest of your dungeon dynamic. We have a one by four section and For a couple to walk of. On. Yes, it pulls. Walk on, climb on, jump on. Line dance on, maybe? A <laughs> couple of two by one sections and a total of four of the one inch square sections. Mm. All to make it easier to uh, uh, use all of these short pieces to, in case their dungeon doesn't quite perfectly fit right. So, more crumbled two by one sections, again with a shore detailing. So a total of four of those. Again, it kind of looks like a hungry monster has been chewing at my dungeon. And then we have some more distress. These could be giant teeth. Yeah. Half destroyed uh, two by two, now in diagonal form because of the, the shore. And we have remnants of, again, uh, two inches across, not quite an inch deep, tapering to a point. These are, you can use them on either side. Also, they flattened out one edge, so you technically could stand these up if you want to use them for ruins of walls. You, they look like they would stand quite well. That may have been because of how they were molded and everything, but you now technically have a standing section of wall, too, if you want to use them that way. So that's cool. Oh, God. Mine is already racing with all the stuff that I can do. Next. Yes. Yes. More burrow sections. Yay. Oh, pencil. Uh, this one actually is exactly the same as the other. I think. No, it is not. Nope. They had a couple different sets of the burrows, and I bought, I think, one of each so that I'd have a little bit more dynamic selection of how I lay things out. That's going to be a big box. going to be a lot of stuff in it. These are going to be some of your big ones. Again, another end, cha a small chamber. Like an egg chamber, possibly. I'm going to open up the next one. No, you are not. With a pen. No, you are not. So a couple of those. And here we go. These are some of the larger rooms from the set. Well, larger is kind of... Remember, for most, you know, creatures digging out layers. The creatures don't need to have to worry about, you know, large living chambers and stuff. It's just a place to get from point A to point B. But they do make chambers for a purpose, storage or cast offs or what have you. They also make a nice place for little tricks and traps again. In the eggs. Or eggs. So there's a large, uh, that's I believe classified as a small room. And again, these all came with the magnet pieces as well. Uh, the small rooms also serve as an intersection, a nexus for travel through the places. It's got uh, four ways out. So a couple of those. And then we have um, a little bit more oblong chamber, but still four ways out. And it has the uh, eggs nested inside which can be popped out for whatever I want to fill it with. I suspect that when I'm finally done with everything, I'll find out that there's enough 
uh, normal floor sections for everything plus uh, enough spikes and um, spikes and egg sections to pepper and salt as I like. Another mm -hmm. the the uh, pedestal uh, style stalactites. More of the floor inserts to make level floors. More spider webbing. If I had have thought there was this much spider webbing on, uh, I can now have all kinds of fun with spiders. Everybody likes My spiders. players are going to hate that. They don't like spiders. There's another larger room with two insert sections. So if you put the floor insets, insert sections in... Take this. Fuck. There we go. There we go. Yee. If I put those in, you know, it makes for a nice little cavern floor. Open chamber, roughly square. Players can have a lot of mischief in a place like that. And then also, to tie everything together, I have more of these uh, tunnel ends. So I could seal up some of those walls. There are points in there. There's one, two, three, four, five, six of those. Yay, I made a And another connector piece. So we've got several Are of there those. any more spikes? No, nope, that's it. And this ah. one didn't have spikes. Ah. This one just had regular floor sections. Okay. That's why I got the wicked section, so that I could get the spikes. Ah. Mm. Um, you're not as likely to have mechanical traps in a burrow, so probably not going to have as many surprise spikes. But sometimes just having the spikes there and as a visible menace can have much of the same effect as closing it off. Um, it makes your players nervous to move, then you're controlling where your players move, and that's sometimes as good as... Thank you. This... This one is one of the things that I actually ordered two of the same thing. So I am only going to open one of these. Because this is something I've kind of wanted for a while. And uh, I saw these, and these were dirt cheap. I think these were like $12. I don't know. They weren't expensive, but I do have plans for them. These are the jail cells. Four manacles! Yay. So with these, and yes, they do come with magnetic manacles. I got two boxes of these. There was a section with jail cells in uh, one of the dungeon sections. Uh, it would have had a lot more uh, walls and floor sections, and I've, I'm pretty good with right now with how much I have in wall and floor sections. So that would have been just extra piled on top, which I didn't didn't need because way back in the back of my mind I was thinking I was where am I gonna put all this stuff? It's not been an easy question to answer. So, this has a corner, corner, more jail. It has Ooh, maybe you could door section, Ooh. which I believe opens. Yes, it's, it's hinged. It does open. Oh, so nice bars. And I don't need to tell you that bars and jails and cells like this are one of those things that uh, you can often find in dungeons. Uh, evil cults like to keep prisoners. Uh, bandits often like to keep prisoners. And if you're doing something that isn't in specifically an underground monster-filled dungeon, uh, there are plenty of civilized places that would have dungeons or places that might have these kind of uh, barred areas, um, you know. Banks, for instance. Like Greyhawk. Like to Greyhawk places in Greyhawk? Yes, certainly. There is at least one jailed section that I know of, and there's probably have a lot more than that. And yes, then there's also the other set of manacles. And I have two boxes. I'm not going to open the other box for brevity's sake, but yes, we have them. Yeah. All right, so almost done. Yay. What do you want? Peace. Okay, this is the big floor piece. Um, one of the things early on that I realized with the uh, with the dungeon tiles that I had was that even though I have what I consider to be a, a decent number of the just common two foot by two two inch by two inch floor blocks, uh, that gets gobbled up really quickly if you're making a large room. 
Q in an eight inch by eight inch block with kind of a neat motif on it. This uh, kind of a braid pattern is cool. Yeah. The, uh, the piece is reinforced. How come you didn't get two of these? Um, didn't really think the need would be there, to be honest. You could. Scott. And uh, yeah, ladies and gentlemen, we just found out what all those pillars are for. If you look in the bottom, there are these large peg holes. Those I'm pillars, those pillars are used to add elevation. How do you? Yeah. Anyway. Don't need to. Got a bunch of them here. Oh. Oh. Oh, that was perfect. It was a that. nice thought. That was a good gesture. So we can take this. Four by four, and we can slot these pillars into it. And put a million of them on. Yeah, I'm just gonna go with the basic four to each corner, one to each corner. So it's gonna look like there's something. And I'm gonna put one in the middle for stability. Yay! And with this, I'm fairly certain those metal posts and you know the structure of dwarvenite. I could put quite a bit of weight on there and it doesn't sag. This is pretty solid with these five posts in there. It creates, grab my, my two foot by two foot section. It is exactly two feet high with the pillars or two inches high. So that looks like I will be able to snug this up this looks like more, this, that looks more like a coffee table than a... Yes, thank you, Alex. <laughs> what? Uh, it'll look different when I have all the dungeon dressings and stuff on it. But I can, I can cover up the pillars with sections of wall if I want to. Um, and that fits perfectly. Or, you know, I can do whatever I want with it, honestly. But, so, there is that. I think I'm also getting a piece or two of those with the shrine coming up. Ooh. But generally in my dungeons, I don't have huge rooms. If you think about it... Where did you put that? Put what? This. Oh, that belongs over here. Oh. I also have two four foot by four foot sections. Again, with that braided motif. And they also have the pillar mounts mm. on the four corners. And I... Oh, actually, I have four of those. So, I have enough of those to make a section, a second 8 foot by 8 foot section by joining those all up if I wanted to. And you can have like a big massive. And that saves me from having to have lots of the um, 2 by Yay. 2 blocks, you know, eating up a lot of space. Mm -hmm. So that's cool. Yes. Two more boxes left to go. Which one do I do? They are the final finale! They are. Which one do I do? Um, you can do the small one, the small box. Ah, uh, let's save that one for last, actually. I'm looking forward to that, and I'm going to treat it like dessert. <laughs> <laughs> this is fan, fan. I think these are fantasy, fantasy props, or? Do, 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 fan. Well, Fanatics Trove. Ah, they're both really good. What's that? That'd be happy. I expect to be. Cannot, cannot foretell now. They're gonna be happy. All right. So these two are all of the little extra bits and props and such. So first of all, we have magnet pieces. We have four magnetic wall or sorry, two magnetic wall sections. You can tell they have the little lightning bolts on the bottom. See that? So those two are magnetic. I've got two more LED torch uh, wall sections. <laughs> I have two more uh, arches with slots that I can drop in uh, wall sections to make another section of wall. I can. And I can call that a secret door if I want. Please stop doing that. And uh, I can put bars in to make that a portcullis. So lots of things I can do. We've got recurve uh, doors. 
again, for a corner piece. Uh, these are smaller doors, but, uh, you know, again, give me nice things that I can do with uh, crafting different rooms, ways in, in and out. We have another section of wall transitioning to a burrow. It's been chewed out. Oh no. Yes. What are we going to do? Crawl into it and properly kill anything that's in it. Oh! Oh, 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 oh. Okay, I've got a couple of magnetic corners. These would be useful for those ossuary pieces. The skull uh, pedestals. Perfect! Perfect! So, uh, yeah. those are nice. That. Almost worth price of admission right there. Just some neat things that I can do. And then we have a couple more things. Or uh, LED alcoves. This time these are torque. These are not uh, set alcoves. These are more curved walls, actually. And they can. Torch. And they have torches or any of the LED effects. There's the torches. There are some there. We're not going to get into those yet. A little bit at a time. A little bit at a time. We've got Tiny. more a 4x1 section, a corner of uh, one foot section of wall, one foot by one foot sections. I there's, a, there's a lot of small pieces, but these are the, the, the oft unheralded pieces that really let you do more with what you've got. We've got a couple of rubble squares here. Again, these would be difficult terrain for somebody passing through. Cool beans. The face recognition is really, really bad. We've got a warded door. This is the one with that big magical seal we had one of in the last set. I really like those doors. And a common 2x2 two two square. But it isn't. It's actually a pit trap. Well, ha, ha. Ah! Um, I don't know. It looks like they covered up the metal plate with this velvet, which is kind of neat. Ooh. Uh, I hope it still has the velvet piece or the metal piece in there because being able to pull that up with the magnetic uh, golf tee of doom was kind of neat. A brilliant little idea, I thought. Here we go. These are some of my favorite things. Holly. We have flaming magnetic traps. Yes, these are what you nail your players with when they walk by your magnetic walls and then all of a sudden, BAM! It's a trap. For effect. BAM! It's a trap. So we've got a couple of those flame jets. My players will never want to walk by a wall again. There's another pedestal mount with a narrow pin for top of arch doors. We have a uh, weapon rack. We have a couple of magnetic oh. arrow traps. I love magnetic arrow traps. Yay! And we have another weapon rack. Can I drop the piece on this? Um. And I don't know where the flashlight is. We'll get it afterward. I have a selection of torches. More torches and torches and torches for all the LED pieces. I have another four foot by four foot section. Oh, found a piece. Thank you, Alex. Found this. Oh, okay. And I'm going to have to go to the bathroom. Okay. So you can do the finale. Okay, we'll do. It's only one more box, it won't be hard to decide. And then we have another one of the grand standing pieces. It's got the two LED pieces here. The center is magnetic. Uh, this was the feature point features in Zaltar's game room, and we've got another one of those now, so uh, my players aren't going to play with me anymore if I keep throwing nasty things at them. Yes, they will. They love me. My players love me. And we have more of the snake quarter pillars, or are these gargoyles. I think these are more gargoyle-ish. Yeah, those are gargoyles. And we've got four of those. We've got this really nice little treasure pile. It's got a little gem diamond in it, or a ruby, I would say. 
Uh, well, that's painted up. I'm sure that's going to look nice. We have another the Magnetic Golf Tee of Doom, um, which will be useful for determining if... Yep, there's still the magnet underneath there for the trap. Pull that on my players. Mwah. And then finally, remember those uh, open alcoves we had? Well, they did send the inserts, which is darn thoughtful. We have bars so that we continue on our cage theme if we wanted to. We've got the wall inserts that make secret doors or just make them honest walls if we wanted to. And we have a couple more door pieces. These are the narrow doors. All right, one more. This was the last section of Feudal Tricks and Traps. This is Eldred's, Eldred's Mystic Trove. A little shiver down my spine. Eldred's Mystic Trove. All right. Fits into a little tiny box, but there were some cool things in here. So, we have uh, magical runes. These are able to go into the torch sockets and they glow red, uh, which I demoed in my first video. We now have six more of those. And considering all the things that I've had so far that I've had the torches in, now I can make them glow red with these magical runes. So, yeah, I, I planned that out. Okay, we have, uh, yes, we have a fully glowing obelisk that, I uh, hope, hope there's a floor piece to power that in here, otherwise I have some, but I think it has that, let's check real quick. Okay, we also have, with this, Another one of those signature rooms with the dual sockets, the LED, or the magnet back piece. Uh, again, focus point. I now have three of those. So that just sweetens what I can do with it. Part of the reason why I got this set was because there was another set called Mystic Pools. I thought those were also oh cool. And what did I know? This pack cost vastly less than that did, but had all the pools. I just didn't get the rooms that came with them. I'm okay with that. Because with this... Yoink! I get a couple of neat effects. We have... The red pillar. Again, the effect is magnified with the low light. It looks even more red and evil in real life. And we also have... Oh, that's right, this doesn't glow. We have magnetic runes, which can go right on. I think I'm going to end, end up painting the rune some like hot pink or chartreuse to really catch the eye when the players see it. It's also going to get them screaming paranoid that it's, you know, explosive runes and such. They might be right more often than not. We have a... A golem in a wall. Golem in a wall. And... Column out of a wall. So, he sockets right into that neatly, which is cool. We have a few invisible walls or walls of force. 
little plastic pieces. We have a, another warded door with a bossed design, but we also have a, an L. Oh no, that's a trap door. We have two trap doors, and with the trap door comes the door to it. And that just sockets right in there. You can also flip it up so that it rests in the channel on the side. So that works out. Uh, another table, much like the one in Zaltar's game room. And finally, finally, we have. Another golem. Oh. This one's got his arms up. This is this would be the angry golem. Oh. This is golem just chilling or recharging. Maybe that's how he gets his iPod recharged. I don't know. So instead of the trap door, I can socket this Mystic Pool. It's not LED, but it looks pretty nice. And I'm going to look for ways of socketing and coloring this so that uh, it looks as truly mystical as, uh, as I wanted to. So that is wave two of the Dungeon of Doom. Still a few more pieces yet. Elevation towers and of course the Jade Shrine of Sisul. Looking forward to that, but uh, that will be for another time. I hope you've enjoyed seeing all the, the neat little toys I have, and I hope that you come to one of my dungeons that I put on so that I can show you some of these firsthand. Uh, will not be this week, uh, but uh, coming up we will be doing mega dungeon runs and things, and I will be using many of these trips and tra traps and tricks and uh, beautiful dungeon pieces So for everybody to enjoy. I'm Rob. Alex has been helping me. Thank you very much, and I hope you have many safe adventures. Farewell.